cool. The floor is yours. Okay, thank you everybody for being here. Um, I don't know, Eric, if I have to precise here that I am funded by ERC as well. No. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I'm going to present uh, the work I'm currently doing with uh, Joshua and Christian on the uh, privately Bayesian hierarchical models for Bayesian learning. With this short title, let's, uh, let's dive in. Uh, so a quick reminder for what is federated learning. Um, well, federated learning is a way of learning that differentiates two different types of people. So there are some clients that are local agents that have private data in their own computational resources um, and uh, a server, like another agent is going to be here to try to organize the cooperation between all the different agents. Um, its goal is to aggregate smartly all the local models and spread it uh, to everybody. However, um, having uh, hidden data and a shared model doesn't mean that the data are private. So we have to uh, set a measure of privacy in order to, to see if uh, the privacy isn't uh, compromised. So to do so, the, like the gold standard is a uh, difference of privacy. Well, the, the most used one and the two definition are uh, the most used. The first one being epsilon difference of privacy. So which is for two uh, data sets uh, that only differ from one uh, record. Uh, the ratio of the likelihood, but the likelihood is uh, bounded by um, we can relax a little bit the definition by allowing a, a small rate of error delta here, but it is the same idea. Um, so differential privacy with federated uh, learning is used in a lot of different applications, going from uh, health, a smart keyboard, uh, smart cards as well. Well, it's pretty used a lot of in uh, in industry. So how does uh, we can create a differential privacy? So two mechanisms are uh, widely used uh, to create a differential privacy. It's, it is often used by adding uh, a location or normal uh, noise to the function that you use. It can be uh, the output of an algorithm, it can be the gradient descent. Well, there is a lot of different uh, way to, to put this noise, but usually this noise uh, depend on the sensitivity of the output. So uh, if I have here, so the wider, the, the, the more, uh, the greater uh, gap you can have between uh, two outputs and um, your epsilon uh, privacy budget here. So as you can see, uh, usually in industry, uh, what is used is approximately uh, uh, epsilon equal 40. And uh, whereas, uh, Advice. It was advised first to be epsilon equal zero point one. So just to see what it means, let's plot here um, the variation of the location noise for different value of epsilon. And as you can see, like uh, for epsilon equals forty, is like pretty spiked, pretty peaked uh, in uh, zero. And uh, we there is a ratio of like four hundred between this value and this value. So the proportion of noise that is added in different privacy is really ridiculous. And so this means that we don't have much randomness in practice and not uh, much protection. So in our case, we're gonna think about uh, federated learning as a hierarchical model. A hierarchical model is a way to, uh, to have a sort of Bayesian uh, modeling of the, your, uh, the federated learning framework. When we can have uh, as local agents a parameter theta A, as the local model, model the parameter theta a. For the further parameter, we can add a prior on these parameters and use samples, samples uh, for communication between the different agents and the difference uh, between the agent and the server. So concretely, in a scheme, what does it look like? We have observations on which we put a model. And for the server, we use uh, a prior. So in order to remain in the Bayesian setting all the way along, we're gonna add a upper prior on uh, on Okay, 
is everything clear for now or do you want me to detail a little bit more? Distribution of the agents parameters with uh, commissioning on the several parameter is known to uh, is done too. Like, like, uh, is it a private information for each agent? Oh, I'm going, going, going to okay. that. Agent. Okay. So, um, and what I mean by communication? So, for each agent, you're gonna draw from the first layer, knowing the data and the other parameter, and from the server, you're gonna draw uh, according to all the different agents, all the parameters you get. So here it is. What is private? What is public? So the private observations whereas all the parameters all the models and all the uh data are public so we can imagine for example it is a hospital that is sharing uh, a model that he trained on uh, cancer data for example um <clears throat> let's see a little bit more um to have an intuition of what is happening here and just think about a simple normal 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 model on which we have all the variances, but just not the mean. Uh, the agent is gonna draw from the posterior, uh, the posterior uh, distribution that we have a close form for. And um, what we see is that here, the sensitivity is infinity. Like uh, we take X difference Y, we draw them uh, completely apart. The sensitivity is gonna be minus infinity versus plus infinity. So, uh, Unless we bound, the future privacy can, cannot be applied here. And uh, moreover, uh, this uh, this scheme of differential privacy uh, doesn't scale well throughout time. So what I mean by that is when we try to repeat again the same algorithm multiple times, we lose in terms of privacy budget. So uh, if we're being just blunt and do it again and again at the time, um, using the composability theorem, uh, after n iterations, we have a privacy budget of n epsilon, um, which is not great for us because we want to target the posterior distribution. So a distribution during uh, an infinite number of samples. So for us, it is not really adapted. So we're gonna have to think of another way to generate randomness, another way to uh, measure privacy. Um, so, uh, in the literature, some scheme have already been uh, taught about, especially in a Bayesian setting. And uh, one way would could be, for example, to taking the distance between the two data sets into account and use this new form of weak privacy, uh, weaker differential privacy. Uh, moreover, uh, we can also think about uh, the randomness introduced by an MCMC uh, scheme and uh, had some sort of privacy for free or slower the uh, convergence uh, to the to a target distribution. The thing is, we're still targeting the, the same distribution, the same true distribution. Uh, so in the everlasting uh, time, we won't have any privacy. So what can we do? So I have a question. Yeah, sure. Robert. I understand. Like in, are you saying that like in uh, the first paper, like they are. Uh putting privacy, they are modeling privacy differently from what you said? Did yeah. you, okay, so it's a different way of modeling privacy, not adding randomness. Um, no, it is always the same randomness, usually. Yeah. Just to say, uh, as we change a little bit the definition, uh, the expectations to have it will be modified as well. For, for example, uh, when we use uh, delta F, the sensibility to add some noise, here it's gonna be modified according also to the distance to between the both parameter uh, both data sets okay and uh, yeah the idea is to uh, to change the definition in order to have better uh, way uh, to measure the randomness you're going to be added to the model Thanks. but still as we are targeting uh, a true uh, a true distribution like in the end well, we will always be able to find it. Okay, um, so one idea is maybe we can try to target a bias model, a contaminated model. Um, and in order to keep a sort of uh, interest in the hierarchical structure, let's try to 
uh, have the randomness and the uh, better uh, the contaminated distribution uh, draw according to the server parameter here. And privacy is going to be controlled with a, param uh, a parameter alpha uh, of contamination. So uh, in practice, how it's going to be derived? But let's think about one agent in particular, the agent A, and uh, be in sort of a box, um, remaining that uh, meaning that we, we really, on a local scale, the other people cannot see what is happening. So what we're going to do, we're going to create a synthetic mod, uh, parameter models here, like model, uh, drawn from the server parameter. So what is going to do? Theta A tail is drawn from the distribution of theta S. Afterwards, we're going to create synthetic data YA drawn from the new model we just created. And afterwards, we're going to create the synthetic uh, the, uh, sort of mixture uh, data set taking a proportion one minus alpha from your uh, your own data and a proportion alpha from the new synthetic data you just created. Okay. And now that we have that, we're going to draw uh, the parameters that are going to be sent back to the server from this new data set and knowing the server that we have OK. Um, so I must insist that uh, the local, uh, this local model is this uh, data or drawn locally. And as well, this proportion can be seen as proper. Theta A and theta S are. Theta A re uh, represents. In the distribution that you wrote. Here? Yeah, it's not the inverse. No, uh, you draw theta A from the posterior distribution. So you know uh, the theta S and you know the data here. You make as if we're taking the, mix, uh, the mixture data from uh, the A. And uh, here just to update, yeah, to update theta, theta, theta S. So we have a sort of a sampler like that. So we have theta A, theta S, Z A, and we try to update them using this scheme. So <laughs> I repeat, we draw the synthetic data set. Afterwards, we draw the posterior uh, local model according to the uh, synthetic data set of the mixture. And then we update the server knowing all the, uh, the local model theta. Okay, uh, so now that we have, yeah. Can I ask a question back to your Yeah, so theta field A. It's not there because it is within the generation of the data. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't even understand. Okay, so it's happening like under the the hood there. Yeah, uh, I integrated. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's what I forgot to. Okay, so every time we do that, essentially, we just. Uh, this is like more generate that we do that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um. So note that we have like done quite a mess with our scheme. Um, why have we done that? So the first, uh, so, so we have uh, some hopes and uh, we're trying to kind of find if uh, this hope can be achieved. So what is happening? We're gonna try to see if uh, the scheme between theta S, theta A and Z at first, uh, well, converges to something and uh, that we have a stationary distribution for that. And interestingly, what we want, and we want to have a server parameter that stay robust. We want this server parameter to not change that much if we have a mixture model here, or we hide and we don't do this, uh, this mixture. So we want t, uh, pi alpha to be close to pi zero. But in the meantime, we don't want pi alpha of the local parameter to be close to the one uh, of the road. So yeah, sort of robustness in alpha to assess some sort of volatility in alpha. And here is our notion of privacy, like our intuition of what can privacy can be with a sort of bias in the distributions. 
So now let's see uh, how it derives in terms of, uh, of challenges. So we have to, first to prove that this thing is a blockchain, uh, derives the uh, poster distribution, uh, find the adapter, uh, derive the definition of privacy that will be uh, adapted to the scheme. And finally, um, how to see it depend to see how it depends on alpha. Okay, um, this plan seem uh, acceptable, but uh, does it at least have uh, follow the intuition that we have in practice? So we're gonna see it with a beta binomial uh, model. So uh, really simple. It's a uh, we do uh, a band we uh, with a conjugated uh, beta distribution and same for the prior and the prior. Um, and do a small experience. And what you can see is uh, if we draw uh, one local parameter here, distribution of one local parameter, that's the distribution of uh, the, the server here. Well, and uh, for alpha going to zero to one, you can see a pro slowly a shift between uh, one distribution to the next one. And it is even more remarkable uh, if we take back the uh, normal, normal, normal uh, problem. Uh, what is uh, here is much cleaner because we have less agents. Um, so here you can see that we go from the posterior uh, to the prior distribution, really cleanly. Okay, so um, now we get that. Let's see what is happening in uh, in the middle, like what is this sort of distribution, which is what we are interested in. Can you just explain the blue line? The blue line uh, represents the post uh, the prior distribution. Okay. The green line represented uh, the post distribution. And uh, the experimental blue lines here are um, the marginal of the post distribution when alpha is equal, is between 0 and 1. Here, alpha equal 0 0.8, alpha equal 0 0.6, so on. And alpha being the, um, the synthetic, uh, the, the probability of you taking a synthetic data point instead of a real data point. Uh, if you have any question so far, Okay, so um, what is happening when alpha is between zero and one? So just to remind uh, what happened, we take our Yakko model here and shifted it to this sort of model, uh, graphical model. And uh, we derived uh, the sampler associated like that. Hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. What is happening is that we, on purpose, forgot the return of Z i to theta s here. Well, it, it makes sense in practice. Like we we won't get uh, the server, the uh, the mixture data set that we just created. Like this will be just revealing that out to the server. But um, in terms of uh, sampling, in terms of uh, targeting. Uh, the posterior distribution of this uh, graph. This means that we are cutting Z A, the return Z A, and so the sampler that we are doing is not targeting a known, uh, yeah, not the corresponding deep sampler. So, uh, using the graphical model, we cannot know what we are targeting. It is not the sampler with that we have is not targeting this graphical model posterior. Even if uh, the relationship will, will, will uh, lead to this thing. So what is happening? We're gonna study instead uh, the transition uh, kernel. So Wait, is it not just a problem of how you have how many objects decomposition of your equation? I mean, because it seems to me that like writing it like this is just a way to see that you can do your sampling. Mm -hmm. You can do, you can't. This is to say that you can't do it. 
um, if you were doing a Gibbs sampling, you would have to put the return of ZA prime here because it is the Gibbs sampling is based on the full conditionals. And uh, what we are doing in our case is forget on purpose the, the return of ZA, meaning that we don't have the full posterior. So uh, we cannot derive the Gibbs sampling from that. Like our iteration, our different steps of randomization doesn't correspond to the Gibbs sampler. So what I mean is, that given the, the idea and the principle behind it, would you not be able to uh, do something like not, not Gibbs sampling, like put it into a proper case in the framework? Right? What do you mean? Like the like procedure. Like, for, for example, should I? You obtain a proposal in the list, right? Yeah. I have a proposal of theta A that is given back to the S here. Yeah. So um, the proposal of theta A is given the superparameters, and the proposal on theta S should be given the proposal you just got and the parameters here. Regardless, um, the, if you have like a Probability, uh, like exponential kernel, I should have this thing, but so we yeah, but it's 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 right? we generate it, yeah, every time we generate it every time. And it is not this is a way to see it in the other way around, thinking how can we have uh, so here's after the sampler we have is fixed, it is like our randomization process. The idea is to see what it is close to, what it is uh, actually doing. And it is not the reverse thing of saying, okay, we have this graph, let's derive a Gibbs sampler from it. It is the reverse process. So we have already a sampler that is uh, fixed. We have to know what is satisfied by this sampler. Okay, so we do have Markov chains and um, what we can see is by uh, integrating out uh, and taking the marginal exponential kernel for on only one uh, uh, on theta a, we have a mixture of kernels. Uh, and most of the mixture of kernel is between the case when we don't have any data, but we don't uh, add any synthetic data, and the case on which there is only synthetic data. We don't see any much data. Um, so, good news. If we have uh, strong assumptions, uh, we can derive uh, the strong assumption being uh, a sort of minorization co uh, condition in a uniform against diagonality of either one uh, or either second one, and we can derive. Uh, the uniform uh, ergodicity and stationary of the mixture of kernels. Bad news, it is first, it is ugly. And the second one, it is um, that there are really strong assumptions. Uh, indeed, if we relax them, we can really found uh, a counter example. So the counter example being, uh, let's imagine you have this uh, transform kernel, and you have a probability one half to go down, one half to go to the right, and keep it all the way. And if we get uh, further uh, away and we go such that uh, the axis is bigger than uh, the uh, y uh, axis of a tree, we go back to zero. And uh, on the other side, uh, let's imagine the second kernel being the same thing, but the reverse of the uh, Service. Um, when we draw iterations, you can see that uh, here there's sort of recurrence in going back to zero in the time. Here, not at all. Like zero is our transition state. So uh, the availability of the two first kernels, so uh, K0 and K1, doesn't mean that the mixture will be ergodic as well. So we have to be very careful about what we're going to be doing uh, to derive the stationarity of the uh, mixture model. Okay, going back to the normal normal case. 
Um, here we only have a mixture of a, a R1. Taking this form. So uh, if we are in one state, we have this transition canal. If we are in another state, we have this transition canal. This is only pin as that. Uh, and what we have is either the existence, station energy, and the form of the station energy. So uh, here we are in a case not having uh, any minorization consent uh, condition uh, for which we have a form of station energy. We can derive the first and second moments uh, from that and, uh, and compare it to uh, the one of the station energy and the posterior case when alpha equals zero. Um, here we can notice then when alpha being private, which is usually the case, you are the one who control uh, how much synthetic data you uh, add to your model. Um, in this case, you will be able to know X after a few iterations, where in this time you couldn't be able. However, this can, this can uh, be nuanced by the fact that if we have all the moments on X, um, we can maybe have some conditions and uh, have some way to uh, cross, uh, cross find alpha and X. An idea to uh, get through past that is just to put a probability on alpha. Okay, so uh, now that we are here, what do we have to do? We have to find the center condition for ergodicity. We have to approximate the stationary distribution according to alpha. Uh, yeah, find uh, the adaptive uh, definition of privacy. And finally, uh, the distribution. Uh, the distribution probability on alpha. So do you have any question? Yeah, it's good done for me. Thank you, Saint Blas. There are some questions during the talk. Is there anyone has any question? Can you go to the last slide when you just say the open question that you want to? What is the what is the hardest of the three? <laughs> Which one is the hardest? So uh, the thing is, when you do when you do have true uh, transition kernels, the mixture can have like really different uh, behaviors depending on the model that we have. Uh, we have seen it through uh, our case with the two with the counter example in which we have transition kernel that go one point one way to and uh, the other to the complete opposite way and um, this makes the mixture completely go uh, out of uh, out of scale um, going to infinity but um, we have the uh, benefit here to have a hierarchical model and to have the two uh, two Markov, two, the two transition kernels that are linked one to the other. Uh, if we can uh, see back to the the form of the transition kernel, <laughs> actually here it is only the posterior distribution. So this means it is only a function of x times this function here. So there is a link between both. Now we just have to just we have to see uh, how this in, uh, what this implies in terms of uh, robustness into the stationary distribution. This is my first question in a way. So in the end, the idea is just to, with some probability, replace each data point with something that is not, which. It's not such a different strategy as it is now, but it's on the same uh, level, let's say, of that Zambian science paper, which is formalized in a metropolitan framework, mm -hmm. right? But where you kind of subsample the. Well, there is. In a way, I mean, you, instead of subsampling, you just replace them randomly. Yeah, but that is not that randomly because it is generated from the server parameter. 
the yeah, same yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. and this is like um as well a problem for deriving uh the convergence because there is a sort of buckle in the problem like uh it is not just uh, the straight uh hierarchical uh, directed uh, acyclic graph there is a, a cycle and because of that it is uh, much more difficult to accept uh, first the convergence and afterwards just to see what is the stationary associated and and because of the non-randomness uh, there is first a bias and there is secondly um yeah the, the bias because there's not some random uh, yeah. thing. I mean, my, my point is a bit it's good to do this on top of this with suitable modification of it might be a bit simpler, but it's similar to what they do in that. So that's uh, anyway, we can discuss another time. Yeah, we, we, we did it um, uh, previously in uh, with just with taking a noisy um, multiple testing uh, scheme. Yeah, but the thing is, by uh, that we were targeting the true distribution at this moment, and take the properties that we have on convergence. We derive from the fact that it was a noisy uh, scheme and saying, okay, we, uh, if you have to read the Alki uh, paper and uh, the Nichols one saying uh, we generate uh, a auxiliary uh, variable y uh, from f of y and uh, we use it in the uh, acceptation step. If we derive something uh, from the sort and, um, and we were targeting as well the true distribution. Right. And that was uh, contradictory to the intuition that we had that uh, privacy shouldn't uh, target the true distribution. Thank you. You don't understand anything. You must project, but don't do it. Fine. My question is consistent with the. Isn't there a trade off with uh, of privacy versus performance? Because I have the feeling that the more syn synthetic data you add, uh, when you sample uh, the parameter you use back, uh, the, the further the, your the model will go from your from your own data distribution. Um, Is this something uh, you're interested in? Uh, at a local scale, uh, it should uh, verify this thing, but uh, the interest of having a hierarchical model is like it's really robust to heterogeneous uh, uh, behaviors. Okay. And uh, well, just like uh, you should make it clear that there is always a trade off. Yeah, there will be a trade off. Privacy is a trade off. Okay, but the interest, I think, like uh, I derive other simulations where there are multiple agents. In some time, I was going to like to alpha equals 0 0.9, and uh, the server was still uh, robust enough to be interesting, whereas the uh, local parameters were a bit more uh, spread out. And the uh, oh, so, so I have a question of uh, a user's question. So, as someone who uses, uh, so I'm looking for uh, yeah. how to use it, huh? How to use it? <laughs> no, 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 how to test one of the I teach different privacy to my students, I always tell them to plug the numbers to see because, like, in your first slide, you, you did a good job saying that Windows 25 is actually not Windows 14, 14, right? Yeah, approximately, but yeah. depend, uh, so iOS 13 has uh, 14, yeah. and it's it's completely useless. So, so in your slide 16, you have this lower bound. It is the epsilon of DP epsilon, right? Epsilon of the lower bound. Uh, oh no, sorry, this is a uh, rather uh, rather bad uh, notation. Sorry, this is uh, usually uh, another constant. That is the okay, so, so this epsilon no. has nothing to do with uh, this. Topic. No, sorry. Uh, There's bad uh, implications. Okay, okay. So, so you, do you have any uh, guarantee on epsilon? So, uh, the guarantee of epsilon, it was like one of the problems, and which it should be. Well, there's two ways of re responding to the question. The first one is saying, okay, uh, we should stick to the differential privacy framework and saying that uh, we have to be at each iteration. Uh, derive a sort of uh, ratio between two different vectors. For that, we can derive really quickly saying, okay, uh, we're taking a proportion alpha at least as a true one. So if 
the first, uh, if you are based on the Dimitrakakis definition of uh, differential privacy, uh, we just have to add uh, an alpha before saying that uh, well, we draw alpha from it. Um, but what we are doing in this type of uh, randomization, it is just to get rid of this differential privacy uh, framework and try to uh, be based more on posterior distribution uh, distance. So um, there's going to be a distance that will not have like an epsilon privacy budget, not have a delta, but it will be a distance based on alpha. And this distance on alpha would be your sort of uh, robustness guarantee and your uh, volatility. How do you alpha? Um, well, in one scale, it will be. Um, there is a portal. If you just think about the ratio of the likelihood, yeah. Here it is in the scheme of the metric like this, but we can just what is happening in our case that we're choosing um, a proportion alpha um, from, from the deposit X that we're going to change. So at least what we have is going to have so we use one minus alpha, then It's going to have that. So it is a way of uh, sticking to the differential privacy framework of, um, of incorporating the alpha parameter. But uh, it is not at all the idea of uh, the work, which is to just not satisfy this type of definition. Yeah, and the user would like alpha to be equal to one. Yeah. yeah. So do you have a, do you have a, a lower bound on alpha? That keeps you like has some guarantee that you are like you are at least this much close to one. So do you have do you have a bound on alpha? I'm not sure. I understand. Uh, about an alpha to satisfy what type of condition? Just like just do you have uh, any uh, any guarantee on alpha that alpha could be? No. Sorry. Okay. So thank you again.